In this video, we're going to look at a common bad habit that you can pick up on when trading and see what steps you can take to try and eliminate it. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com and this is uh, the latest in a series of videos where we're looking at biases or, or common bad habits when trading. Uh, our trading platform at Capital.com has an algorithm that will try and detect if you're slipping into bad habits and push you towards articles and videos like this that hopefully help you identify it and um, try and eliminate it and take steps to hopefully improve your trading. This time around we're going to look at the disposition bias. So first of all, um, let's see exactly what I mean by that. So let's explore this disposition effect in a bit more detail. So what do we actually mean when we talk about disposition? It's this balance between our attitude to, to losing trades and winning trades. So put simply, holding losers too long, this is a really common problem where someone has a trade on whatever market it is, the market's moving against them and they think, well, I'll just hang on a little bit longer because maybe the market will come back and I'll start making a profit. So they, they build up a bigger and bigger loss. And the flip side of that is exiting profitable trades too quickly. So coming out of a trade that's in profit and if the market just goes back slightly, panicking and snatching at that profit. So there may be a lot more profit in the trade, but they get shaken out by a slight move against them. So they take their profits too quickly. And it's all about really spending too much time in losing trades. So hoping the market is going to come back maybe rather than just taking your losses. And of course, the flip side of that, not giving profitable trades more time to work in your favor. If you've bought into a market and it's risen, let's say, for a couple of days, it's having the confidence in your view to think, well, actually, there could be more profit to come in this trade and not having the fear that the market is going to take that profit away from you. So why are these bad traits to have? Let's have a look at the results of this approach. For many traders, their average winning trade is much less than their average losing trade. For example, if when you're right, when a trade is profitable, you make £50, but when you're wrong, you lose £100, you can see that you need to be right an awful lot of the time to make money. If you're right only 50-60% of the time, it's just not going to happen. So we really want to try and shift that ratio between profit and loss the other way, where our profits are bigger than our losses. So as you saw there, put simply, it's our attitude to profits and losses, taking profits too quickly, letting losses run too far, staying too long in losing trades, not staying long enough in winning trades. Um, that's the theory of it. Let's look at some real examples and how this can play out uh, in actual markets. I'm going to use an extreme example here to um, illustrate the, the problem of getting shaken out of a trade too quickly. Here's Netflix, so uh, the US stock, the streaming video service. And we can see the price has hit a level of 205, 204 dollars, has backed off and it's come back and it's broken out. So you might decide to buy at 205 because you've got a breakout. You think the price is going to move higher. So you buy in at 205. Let's walk forward a few days and see what happens next. So over the next three days, the price does move higher. It moves from 205 as high as 212, 213. But then we have this big down day, this down candle. And this spooks you because you don't have a trading plan. So you decide to snatch at your profits and you maybe sell out at, at 210. You've made $5 on the trade, um, but you are hoping that maybe there was more, but a bit of weakness in the market has shaken you out. What happens next? I said this was an extreme example and you can see that was the point you got shaken out uh, around about 210 and the market just carried on powering higher afterwards uh, in this example moving as high as, as 285. So this is extreme but it does I think illustrate the problem of snatching up profits too early if you don't have a plan. So when we're in winning trades we want to try and give the trade to work time to work out further in our favor. Let's stick with Netflix. We've jumped forwards again in time. The price is trading now at $400 a share. We decide to buy in because we think the market is going to carry on higher. We could see there was a low at 380. So we might decide to set our stop loss, let's say 372. 
if the market drops to 372, we're going to come out for a, a manageable loss, but we're buying in at 400. Let's just jump forwards and see what happens next. We have a really volatile couple of days. The next day, the market actually gaps through our stop, comes back up. We would have had the opportunity, if we wanted, to get out at 372. But we think, well, actually, maybe this is just a strange move. I'm going to hang on. My stop was at 372, but I'm going to break my rules. I'm going to wait and see if this market does start to move higher. We jump forward a couple of weeks. Now we're really regretting we didn't take that first loss. The price is trading at 337. So by breaking our rules, ignoring our stop loss, staying in a losing trade too long, we've incurred a much bigger loss than we were planning on taking. And plenty of people may even think, I'll decide just to carry on holding and hope it comes back. And the risk here, of course, is that your losses just get bigger and bigger. So this is a really uh, common bias, I think that plenty of us will experience from time to time. Now we know what it is, let's take a look at a way of combating it. So let's look at some possible solutions, some things we can do to try and eliminate this disposition. When we open a trade, think about a profit target. So if we're a buyer at, let's say, 500, and we think the market could rally up to 550, don't be tempted to exit at 510, 515, 520. Try and squeeze as much out of the trade as possible. Arguably even more important, have a definite stop loss when you open a trade. So if you're a buyer at 500 and you think the market's going to go to 550, you may decide to have your stop loss at, at 485. So when you put the trade on, if the market starts going against you, don't be tempted to move your stop loss further away because you're going to stay longer in a losing trade and you're going to increase your planned loss on the trade. And think about the relationship between the risk, the potential loss and your potential profit. If you're doing trades where you're risking £50 to make £50, you may want to address that. You know, because what we want to do is have our profit, our potential profit, to be a multiple of our risk. So if we're looking at a trade, we want the potential upside to be maybe two, three, maybe even more times the size of our potential loss. And if that trade doesn't make sense from a profit versus loss point of view, we can pass on it and trade something else. So it's all about giving more thought to the potential profit versus the actual risk we're willing to take and trying to squeeze out as much profit as possible out of trades and recognizing losing trades and exiting them for manageable losses. I hope you found this video useful. Um, there'll be a whole load more content that we'll be doing on this topic. So to never miss out, just make sure you're subscribed to the channel by pressing subscribe. And if you click on the notification icon, you get automatically notified every time we upload a new video.